Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on January 16th, 2022. And this week is a special week. Every year, the third Sunday here in January, we talk about helping and working with people that can't help themselves. We're talking about the lives of unborn, the aged, the disabled, and those of different racial and ethnic backgrounds. This is a question that many Christians have yet to answer. God sees the plight of the oppressed and acts on their behalf, and He calls us to do the same. God is pursuing, He is pursuing justice in the face of all of the issues throughout the world. And, of course, no one can deny that we have, have some cases that occur in our society and all over the world. Our scripture today comes from Obadiah. There is only one chapter, and it is from verses 1 through 4 and 10 through 17. We know little about this man except for he was a prophet, and his message was to the Edomites the descendants of Esau and to other nations. And during the invasion of the Babylonians there in Judah, Edom used God's judgment on them to get revenge on the Israelites. They hated them. So God rebuked them and pronounced judgment on Edom and other nations that joined them against the Israelites. So let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you that we can look into your word, Lord, that we can learn that you want us to care for those that can't help themselves. Help us to understand how we can help the unborn. Lord, how we can help those that can't take care of themselves. Lord, help us to learn how to deal with these and then help these folks any way uh, that we can. We ask that the Holy Spirit would guide us as we look into your word and see that God loves these people and he helps them and he wants us to help them. So as we look into your word, we want to learn, we want to grow, we want to serve you. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> now, the Lord spoke to this prophet, Obadiah, in a vision. 
and he used this same you know type of things in the Bible in several places and this is what the Lord said for him to say Obadiah 1 through 4 this is what the Lord God has said about Edom we have heard a message from the Lord an envoy has been sent among the nations rise up and let's go to war against her talking about Edom look I will make you insignificant among the nations you will be deeply despised your arrogant heart has deceived you you who live in clefts of the rock in your home on the heights who say to yourself who can bring me down to the ground though you seem to soar like an eagle and make your nest among the stars even from there I will bring you down this is the Lord's declaration Edom was founded or started with one of one of Jacob's two twins remember Esau came out first and then his younger brother as a twin came out second and Esau and his line his family became the Edomites so Obadiah had this vision and he wrote it down Obadiah received it from the Lord and this vision painted a picture of future events that would happen so the Lord announced a message to the nations saying those around Edom to rise up and to go to war against Edom so Edom was in a predicament because they had sinned against God and against his own brother. And so God said that he would punish them and make them small and deeply despised so God's judgment was going to come upon Edom on account of its arrogance and opposition to God's people they had developed a false sense that they were secure because of their dwellings uh, especially in the mountains and they thought that no one could come in and take over and also capture them but God said that your arrogant heart has deceived you and pride creates spiritual blindness and the Lord hates pride he he says there in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16 these six seem these six things the Lord hates yea seven are an abomination to him 
and the first thing that he hates is pride. Uh, the Lord hates pride in Proverbs 8, 8, 13. He says that he will humble those who live in lofty places. He brings it down. He brings it down to the ground. He throws it to the dust. So, the answer to the Edomites' question, who can bring me down to the ground, is very simple. It is God. Opposing the Lord provo uh, proves a disastrous ending every time. They said they could soar like eagles swooping down on their prey and their nest was among the stars. Edom thought they were stronger and they were stronger than the Israelites and they planned on taking advantage of them. But God would show them that that's not exactly the way it was going to happen. They had sinful pride. And sinful pride can cause us to disrespect and devalue others based on superficial criteria such as gender, race, economic status, and or appearance. Pride is blinding and it is dangerous. Jesus told his followers, whosoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Israel did experience God's judgment because they failed to, re to repent from their, their sins. They worshiped idols, but they were still the people of God. And he was going to correct them and in the future save them again from their evil ways. And despite our own failings, God treats us with grace and mercy. The Lord is gracious to the ungrateful and evil there in Luke 6:35. We represent God, and we should return good for evil. Help the needy, and give to the poor, and bless those who mistreat us. As ones that walk with the Lord, we should walk the way that He walked. So, there were three types of sin that Edom had committed and that we also do. Sins of omission. These are things that God commands us to do, but we simply don't do them. Sins of commission this is the sin of active rebellion. Actions we take that are not loving and against God's commandments. And then there is the sin of self-preservation. It's a sin when we only look out for what's best for us. This sin can easily look harmless. 
but self-preservation is a worldly mindset when we place ourselves first. Jesus commanded us to seek his, his kingdom first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Obadiah goes on to let Edom know what God has in store for them. In Obadiah 10.14, he says, You will be covered with shame and destroyed forever because of violence done to your brother. On the day you stood aloof, on the day the strangers captured his wealth, speaking of his brother Jacob, actually in the future. While foreigners entered his city gate and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were just like one of them. Do not gloat over your brother in the day of his, of his calamity. Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction. Do not boastfully mock in the day of distress. Do not enter my people's city gate in the day of their disaster. Yes, you do not gloat over their misery in the day of their disaster and do not appropriate their possessions in the day of their disaster. Do not stand at the crossroads to cut off their fugitives and do not hand over their survivors in the day of distress. Obadiah, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said that Edom would be covered with shame. This humiliation would be brought about by God and they would see their ultimate destruction. Edom hated Israel. Now, you remember that these two were brothers. Esau came out first, and then his brother Jacob. Uh, as they became men, Esau was the hunter and uh, Jacob was more uh, of someone that uh, he was a builder uh, but he was he was not what you would call you know like a he-man uh, but he was smart and when his brother had hunted and uh, he came in one day and he was tired and very hungry, uh, Jacob made him a bowl of beans and uh, talked Esau into giving him his birthright. And so Abraham's line went from Isaac to Jacob. And so from his line came the Savior through David. And then, of course, Jesus. So Edom hated Israel hated uh, Jacob. And this is what 
happened when the Babylonians came in is that uh, Edom cheered on the Babylonians saying, destroy it down to its foundations in Psalm 137-7. And the Bible says that Edom stood by and watched what was going on. On the day that the city was seized, the Edomites stood there indifferent to the suffering. The Bible says that Edom would be with shame. This humiliation would be brought about by God. So at some point, they would have to repent of their sin. <clears throat> he goes on to say, Do not gloat over your brother. Israel's calamity was an extreme misfortune for the Israelites because the city, it was razed, it was burned, it was torn down. And Edom did gloat over it. God said, do not rejoice over what happened there in Judah and the capital city. And they mocked them. They laughed at them. God said, Do not enter my people's city gate. And, of course, the gates had been torn down, and they came in. God cares for the downtrodden. He did then, and he does now. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. That's Matthew 25, 40. And God said, You did it for me. And the Edomites did it against God. When Paul persecuted the church before he was saved, his name was Saul. Jesus met him on the road and said, Why are you persecuting me? He didn't say, why do you persecute the church? He was saying, you were persecuting me, my people. He said, do not appropriate uh, their uh, possessions. The gates were torn down and the city had no defense. But this, not, this did not give Edom the right to go in and steal. And then he also said, do not stand at the crossroads to cut off their fugitives. In other words, people were trying to escape and the Edomites were stopping them. Uh, they were on the roads. They would stop them, and they would turn them in. So all of these things were going on between the Edomites who were taking advantage of, of God's people. And... God said that 
they would pay for it. They would be punished. And he goes on in Obadiah 15 through 17, saying, For the day of the Lord is near against all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. What you deserve will return on your own head. As you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all nations will drink continually. They will drink and gulp down and be as though they had never been. But there will be a deliverance on Mount Zion, and it will be holy. The house of Jacob will dispossess those who dispossessed them. God told them that the day of the Lord is near against all nations. The expression has been used several different ways to announce the Lord's judgment on Israel for idol worship and not following God's guidelines. And the prophets also used it to announce that God would deliver his people from those that were against them. And God would also judge foreign nations that opposed Israel and also that God was going to judge the nation. God promised that he would bring justice on the Edomites and that all nations would soon be judged. The Lord said, as you have done, it will be done to you. Solomon said, through the work of the Holy Spirit, that God will bring every act to judgment, including every hidden thing, whether good or evil. Ecclesiastes 12, 14. God will punish the world for its evil and wicked people for their wicked works. Isaiah 13, 11. No one will escape his righteous judgment. So we that are saved, we saints, can pray for God to repay men and women according to their works in Psalm 28, 4. We can and should speak up for those who have no voice for the justice of all who are oppressed in, in many ways. We need to speak up and judge righteously and defend the cause of the oppressed and the needy. Talking about abortion, uh, the unborn, the aged, the abused, uh, no matter their age, but especially elder uh, abuse, which uh, they don't have a whole lot of control over what happens to them. And then there are those that uh, are hurt by race. And so there are many that are oppressed, that are disabled, that are needy. So God will pour out his judgment on 
on those that have done wrong. And he will make sure that they are judged. God will do what is right. Psalms 37, 1 through 2. And his judgment is always just. God will restore his, his own people. Judah looked like a war zone, but it was rebuilt. The city, the temple, it was all rebuilt. God would take it back. So the Lord would show favor on the house of Jacob, and he would remove their yoke of oppression. And the Lord was working things out for their good. And he is working things out for the good of those that are oppressed, the ones that we have talked about, for the needy, for the sick, for the unborn, for the aged, for the disabled. He is working for them and wants us to help them. He will deliver them. Yet, our ultimate, our ultimate deliverance is seen in the life-changing gospel of our Lord and Savior. The first man, Adam, sinned in the garden. And because of God's mercy and his judgment, humanity was removed from the garden. But things kept on getting worse. Humanity became rebellious and evil, and it needed uh, to be delivered from the shackles of sin. So God sent His Son. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor in Luke 4, 18 through 19. God sent Jesus into the world to save it, not condemn the world, John 3, 17. He offers forgiveness and new life to the spiritually bankrupt, the unrighteous, and those who seek mercy, knowing they can't save themselves. He made all of this possible by going to the cross, shedding his blood, dying, and raising from the dead on the third day, just like we will one day on our way to heaven, those of us that are saved. And he did it so that we wouldn't have to because we can't. We can't pay for our sins. We can't work for them to be saved. And now he calls on us to show love and mercy towards those who need it the most. The truth is, this world has people 
who will try to take advantage of others. We represent God. We can make a difference in the world as we seek to act justly, to love faithfulness and to walk humbly with our God. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you. And we thank you that you remind us of our responsibility to speak up for those who have no voice. Encourage us to look for ways to work together on a cause that needs believers to advocate for those who need someone to speak up on their behalf. Lord, we know that this calls for an active response. We may read it, we may understand what needs to be done, but Lord, we need to take action. We need to help those who cannot help themselves. And we ask that the Holy Spirit would guide us and show us how we can help these folks that cannot help themselves. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior. We love you and we want to serve you and help us to do the right things, Lord, in our life. And I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.